All right, so I am going to try this again. This is a topic on Stinger sound design. And the principles here are to use elements to try to convey emotion in your stingers, right? So a stinger is a, a short sort of sound effect. It could be used as a transition, could be used as like a riser type thing, could even be used as an impact. Um, or it could be used as an ending, and, and quite often I find myself using them as endings um, or just sort of miscellaneous textures throughout a piece. And I've created a sound here that's behind me. I'm going to take myself off the screen and just play it for you so you can hear what that sounds like. All right, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about what that really is. Okay, so... Um, I've got a pitch envelope working on this. I've got a filter envelope working on this. I've got some spectral synthesis, which I'll explain a little bit. Um, but basically it uh, is picking and choosing certain harmonics within this sample. Now, believe it or not, this really all are, originates from a sample, uh, two different samples. One of a guitar, which you can probably hear in there pretty clearly, but the other uh, is actually a sample of a telephone ringing. So you'll see how um, using these techniques, you can take a sample that's completely unrelated from any purposes uh, as a transition or um, a riser, and you can have it serve in that role. Okay, so let's take a look at how I went ahead building this. So I've got this, I'm going to first start by just disabling uh, different elements, right? So I'm going to mute the kind of guitar thing. I'm going to turn off the resynthesis. I'm going to set the envelope amount on my pitch envelope to zero. And I'm also going to set the envelope amount here and reset the cutoff on my filter. And we get a phone ringing. Okay, that's all we get. Now, it's actually just uh, one sample here of a phone ringing. But because in Backbone, which is this software that I'm working in, this is kind of a, a sound design tool that Steinberg makes. Uh, it does run as a VST, so you can run it in Logic. You don't have to run it in Cubase. I happen to be, but you can run it in any uh, VST host. So I've taken the amp envelope here and I've expanded it out to include two and a half beats, right? So from here to here is one beat, that's another beat, and then this is a half beat. So we have uh, five eighth notes is how long this, uh, this is, okay? So by doing that, it's basically, I've also set this loop variable here. So the, um, the phone's gonna ring until this amp envelope ends. That's why it's repeating and then it's kind of fading out, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna to do to this, oh, sorry, let me <laughs> not have that play again. So the first thing I'm gonna to do to this is I'm going to, after of course I adjust the amp envelope to lengthen how it plays, I'm gonna look at the pitch envelope, okay? And that's right here, this little icon. And I've created a rather simple pitch envelope here, it just basically increases the pitch. But the important thing here is, that as you increase a pitch, as you probably know from all kinds of sampling, as you increase the pitch, um, then of course you are going to be increasing the speed of playback. Okay, there are ways to manipulate that so it's not the case, but um, in this situation I'm actually using that to my advantage and, you, and you'll hear how that, how that sounds. So if I, if, I, if I play it right now, this pitch envelope has no impact because my envelope amount is set to zero. But if I jack that all the way up, you'll notice now that I get an entirely different sound. And let's just look at the frequency response of this. You can see the filter kind of opening a little bit. It's not actually filtered at the moment, but you can kind of see the frequency response there. <laughs> there you go, you get some sort of interesting sounds when I, when I cut it off. So the envelope amount here is ramping up the speed and it's playing it so fast that it no longer sounds like a, uh, a telephone. You can actually see that, how fast it's playing the sample. Right, 
So that's the first thing the pitch is doing. And that's all, all I really have. I have this very simple pitch, um, pitch envelope, and I'm turning the amount up. Okay, so what that's creating is this anticipation because as, as pitch goes up, uh, speed goes up. I mean, that's the definition of pitch is, is a speed of vibration. So the faster something resonates or vibrates, generally the higher we consider that pitch to be. So there is definitely some reason for us cognitively to associate rising pitch with acceleration or speed. And um, what I think this does in terms of emotion is it engages the viewer or the listener to kind of track and identify. It gives us, it's, it's like uh, the sound effect of like a, a speeding car or maybe a jet or a train approaching us. We're intellectually and subconsciously drawn to try to identify what's going on and measure it and predict, right? So it's, it, it has a very powerful effect on us emotionally. It engages us right away having that, that pitch go up. So let's look at the, uh, the next element here, which is going to be filtering. So in the filters, I've created this envelope here, which kind of ramps up slowly. And this is basically a filter envelope opening. So if I turn the cutoff here down, down uh, so that it's, it's basically muting all the audible frequencies, and I turn this envelope filter up to make sure that the, um, or sorry, envelope amount to make sure that the envelope filter is actually functioning. Now I get this kind of more traditional riser sound. And it sort of comes out of nowhere, right? So um, if I, I don't really want that to start off being totally quiet. So I'm gonna maybe bring the cutoff like there Maybe a little lower. There you go. So it does start at, a, at some kind of sound. All right. So we've got the filter envelope. And um, that is helping us to kind of anticipate an approach. Again, sort of talking about that sense we get when we hear a plane or a train or a car coming towards us. It engages us, right? It's emotionally riveting because we're trying to uh, anticipate it, but also we have this sense that something's approaching us. And as a filter opens up like this, that is essentially a high pass filter. It's starting really low, or I'm sorry, it's a low pass filter and it's starting really low. So we're not really getting any of the audible frequencies and it's slowly opening up. And as it does that, it's letting more and more mid range and then ultimately high frequencies through. Um, we are getting more and more of the frequencies that our ears hear well, which are mids and highs. So in so doing, the filtering is also starting to amplify the audible frequencies that we're more sensitive to. So obviously that's going to have an emotional response and um, very, very powerful. When you combine the, uh, the rhythmic effect we're getting from the, the looping and the faster pitch, and you combine that with the actual pitch going up, and you combine that with the filtering, we start to get this very powerful impact. But there's one more step to this which um, I actually want to, uh, let me just go back to this. Um, I have the resynth off, which is good. Um, I wanted to just talk about this other sample I have right here, and this is the guitar. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute that, and you can hear now how that sounds. Right, so it's adding this kind of musical element, which is really effective for um, linking this stinger to the key, the tonic center of whatever piece I'm working on. That's, that's really, really helpful. And then there's another aspect, which is um, it distracts the listener, maybe isn't the right word, but it, um, it, it, it engages the listener or the viewer with another sound. So they start to anticipate what's happening with this riser, and then they get something else that, that they're tracking and listening to, and it keeps them engaged, right? It's like the more um, textures there are that, that the listener can identify and separate out in their brain, they're going to have that extra 
uh, duration of time that they're really engaged by the sound. Now, there's one more thing before I finish that I want to talk about. It's in Backbone, and this is the spectral synthesis aspect. It's this resynth engine. And what I'm doing in the resynth engine is pretty simple. I'm slowing it down just a little bit. Not, not sorry, this one, the uh, original telephone. So, all right, let me turn this off. Turn this one on. And I've got this speed set here slow. This is probably familiar to anybody who's worked with spectral synthesis or granular synthesis. I've got a position, and the position I can kind of move around at any point in the sample, and then I can slow the speed of playback, basically warping how it gets played back. And I'm going to turn off my uh, read here just for a sec, because I'm going to talk about that in a sec. And now I get a, a, an even more interesting sound because it's actually slowing down the sample playback. Now I have one more thing, which is I have this uh, automation back here, right here. Um, this automation is controlling this parameter called purity, and we can see it goes all the way from the right all the way to the left. And what purity does, uh, essentially, is it um, reduces the sample's harmonic content to what, it, what the software perceives as its fundamental. So as the knob goes further to the right, it's more fundamental. As it goes to the left, it's actually amplifying and accentuating all the other harmonics, which essentially is like making noise, right? So you got like a sine wave in a very sort of simplistic way on the one side, you go to the other side, and what you're getting is noise. You're getting all the harmonics being raised up. And you can actually see that in this uh, spectrum analyzer. So check this out as we, um, as, as, you, as we play it back. You're getting a lot more content there. And you can even see it down here in this uh, sort of filter feedback um, spectrum analyzer here, that as this knob turns, you're going to go from just having a, a couple of harmonics in here to having lots and lots and lots. The harmonics increase in number and you know, it sort of becomes more populous, right? So without that automation, This purity value stays static. I could change it to something like that. Or I can use the automation, which is going to fluctuate from one to the other. And it's doing that as the pitch increases, right? So it's actually really a, 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 just a very powerful tool. This is called Backbone. I highly recommend it. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to endorse it or anything like that, but I, it's, it's something that um, I got with uh, a purchase a while back. I didn't really look at it too much, but it's become my go-to for designing stingers. So hopefully what uh, you know, I've conveyed and, and you can take away from this is that you can use pitch envelopes to actually create rhythmic texture, not just pitch-oriented texture. Hopefully you can um, think about using frequency and pitch envelopes a little differently in terms of how you can transform um, sound over time to convey a specific emotion. Um, and then I also hope that you, know, you come away from this understanding a bit of a workflow, maybe using Backbone or maybe just using uh, other tools that you already have. Like I said, I don't think that uh, that's impossible to achieve this in, in a variety of different um, tools out there. Uh, but if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I am continuing to improve my live streaming uh, infrastructure. There's some definitely some kind of issue that I'm facing there, so I'm hoping to get away from the static videos pretty soon. Please do like and subscribe if you like the videos. I promise I'll get the live stream fixed up soon. And um, I really appreciate your support. Thank you again so much for watching. And I will see you in the near future. All right. Bye for now.